Hey Nerdy Knitter, Tanya here. It's the end of another month and that means another Nerdy Knitting Roundup where we look at the projects I've been working on for the past month. So grab a drink and your knitting and let's settle in for a good chat. So just one announcement before we get right to all of the knitting. We've got a knit along coming up, the November Cowl or the Longshore Currents Cowl. These are both using Knit Picks yarn, Knit Picks Chroma. This one's in worsted. This one is in fingering weight, um, but very simple because, I mean, it's stranded knitting but you're only using two colors because the yarn is doing all of that work for you because it's a gradient yarn. So these are both knit the same way. You can see, where did my seam go? <laughs> There's the seam right there. So you cast on, you knit a tube, and then you bind it off and you sew the ends together. So all of your stranded floats are on the inside and you can't see them. So both sides of the cowl look really nice. So our kickoff party is going to be November 5th, uh, it's a Tuesday at 6 p.m. where we're gonna have our first live stream of three live streams. We're gonna have some giveaways and we'll talk about stranded knitting, answer your questions. So you can find more information. I'll link to an, a post here on YouTube where I have all the details. There is a little community as well, not on YouTube because there's no way to like have you post pictures or anything. That is totally optional. There will be one final giveaway that you have to be in the community for, but everything else is gonna happen right here on YouTube. Our weekly live streams with some little giveaways and um, talking about the patterns. All of that happens here. If you want to do any chatting or enter the final giveaway, then you have to do that over on the community. But that is all outlined in the post I'll link down below. Our sponsor this month is Yarnable, and you're going to want to stick around to the end for that because our giveaway this month is also from them. So Yarnable is a great subscription box. I really love all the fun little extras and the yarn too. The yarn is great. For me personally, I, I don't buy yarn unless I have a project in mind for it. I might buy like the occasional skein of like sock yarn, but in general, I don't just buy yarn. So this is sort of like stretching my creative abilities to have yarn show every, mo every month and then I have to figure out what I'm gonna do with it because I don't like to have a big stash of yarn. I don't have a ton of space. I have moved to a whole little bedroom in our house, so I do have a little more space, but I don't wanna fill it all up with yarn, but that would be good for soundproofing, so maybe I do, I don't know. But anyway, Yarnable is a great subscription. There's so many choices. You can choose between DK and fingering weight and they're gonna have worsted weight in the future. And then you can choose from like a whole bunch of like sizes. You can do the one skein or the deluxe packages with two skeins or extra skeins. Like you can just do, there's a lot you can choose from. And of course, all the fun things that come with it every month as well. So I'll put a link down for Yarnable down below and be sure to stick around to the end because our giveaway is for their deluxe package for November. Now I like to start the month by looking back at last month. So when I finish a podcast episode, I have all my projects in a pile. So I pull my camera out, record a quick little bit about what I want to finish in the upcoming month. So let's see what I said in October about what I wanted to finish this month, and then we'll see how much I actually accomplished. Here's my pile of knitting for the month. So let's just walk through everything that's here to see what I want to get done by the end of next month. So first off is my scarf, this double knit scarf. I want to be done. Like I am ready to be finished with this. So I'd finished quite a lot here. So I'm just going to move my marker. So I'll know that this is what I've got left to do from this point on, about 40 more rows. So the goal is to have this finished and hopefully washed and blocked and ready for Christmas. And then the Scout Shawl, I think all I wanna do with this is, I'm working on these two charts right here and they were both big charts, like double, two charts. There were two charts for this one and then two charts for this. And I'm on the second chart for each one. I think my only plan here is to finish that. Let's just get that second chart done and start the next group of colors. I think that'll be good progress with this. Now with this shawl, the fading point, this one I'm really liking. Like it's just so relaxing. I want to finish. This is part number two. I want to finish that and then get started. I don't know what the process is yet for joining everything, but I want to finish this piece and then I want to start the process of joining everything together. I'm not sure I'll finish it all, but at least get it started. For the fingerless mitts or the wristlets or wristers, whatever you want to call them, wrist warmers, um, I want to finish the first one and at least get the second one at least cast on. I should be able to do that just fine. And the Twitch pullover, this is a personal project. I would like to finish, hmm, 
I wonder if I can get all three back panels done. That might be a stretch, but I'm gonna say I'm gonna try to get all three. I've done this much and that was just a weekend of knitting. So yeah, I'm gonna say I wanna get all three back panels finished by next month. And I'm only at the swatch stage for this uh, new top-down yoke pattern, but um, I'm giving myself three weeks total to knit the sample for my size, but this is my work knitting, like what I'll be working on during the week. So I think I'm gonna grade the pattern this week and cast on. So I think by the time the next podcast rolls around, I should have my sample pretty much done, hopefully. And then also let's at least try to get this planned out and cast on the geode cowl. Let's try to do that. We'll see if we get to that or not, but I will at least try to get like my my stitch count and gauge figured out so I know how many stitches to cast on. And that's it for this month. Now the first thing I am so happy to have off my needles is the Twilight Realm scarf. And you can see it, it's right behind me. Now it doesn't look super long there, but I have wrapped it around the neck twice because it goes to the floor, literally, even on the mannequin. It's a long, long scarf. Uh, so it's all finished. The ends are all woven in. It looks really fabulous. You can see both sides of it. Like it really came out nice. It was a huge project though. I started it over Christmas vacation last year and I just wrapped it up this month. <laughs> so it's finally done. It took me almost a year to finish this scarf, but it's a gift for my daughter. So it's going to go be put away for Christmas and she knows about it. She's seen me knitting it. She's heard me complain about it <laughs> for the last e almost year. So, um, but it was, it was nice to really focus on double knitting. Like I am super confident in my double knitting skills now, not a problem at all because the project took so, I mean, I've worked on it like pretty much every weekday, at least a few rows over the past, well, almost year. Um, so my tension really improved. Like if you look at the beginning of the scarf and the end, you can see a big difference like in the tension. Nobody's gonna see it from like from the distance. Nobody can tell. Other knitters, if they inspect it, they'll be able to tell. Um, but like the edge stitches improved. I was able to like fix mistakes. I practiced dropping down to fix stitches, just a few rows. I am not gonna like drop a bunch of rows to fix double knitting. Um, but how to duplicate stitch when I did find mistakes. Uh, that was a great tip, thank you. I don't know why in my head, I just did not think about duplicate stitch. I had a few spots where I had um, done the wrong color. So it wasn't super, there was, there was one place that was very obvious. I even held it up for my daughter to see if she could see it and she pointed it out right away. So that one I knew I had to fix and I wasn't gonna rip it out. It was like 20 rows back at that point, I think. So I duplicate 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 stitched <laughs> over that area on both sides because I had I had done the mirror mistake on both sides um so I learned I learned a lot so I think we are going to have like a double knitting month sometime next year where uh we I'll like design a little project and we'll walk through the process of double knitting how to fix your mistakes and all of that and that might either be like all hosted here on YouTube or I might like do an online class we'll see that's in the future but um, definitely after a year of almost weekday, daily knitting, double knitting, then yeah, I feel like a pro. <laughs> Not a pro, I don't really, I haven't done anything with like increases and decreases yet. That's probably the next thing to tackle. And last month I talked about uh, Nathan Taylor's double knitting book. I highly recommend that. There is a section on the increases and decreases and I would like to tackle a project that includes those. And he's got some really lovely shawls that are double knit, but I just can't imagine how long a shawl would take me uh, if the scarf took me, well, it's a really big scarf too, so it's probably shawl size. So it would be like another intense project, but it's in the back of my mind. I need to recover a little bit, but before I tackle another double knitting project, but I think I would like to tackle one that has some increasing and decreasing and some kind of pattern in it. We'll see, and he's got, Nathan Taylor has a lot of fabulous patterns. There's even some that combine like, I think brioche with double knitting, and it's just, he's got, yeah, he's got an insane talent for combining these techniques together. But anyway, that is done. It's off the needles. It uses a uh, Knit Picks Comfy Fingering in Planetarium and Clarity. And that's a blend of Pima cotton and acrylic, very soft yarn, uh, not pilly so much, but it, it, does, it is a bit like sort of fuzzy feeling. Um, 
but I didn't notice anything in the wash particularly about that. But now that it's washed, it looks it looks really nice. Everything evened out. I gave it a good soak first because acrylic is water resistant. So I, I find that if you let it soak first, then it does have a chance to like absorb some water if you let it sit there in the water for a while. Um, but, and it's machine washable. I did throw it in the washing machine on the delicate cycle, but um, looks good. Really pleased with it. Glad it's done. Now, I don't know if I can count these as finished projects, but I'm going to because a lot of my knitting time over the past couple weeks has been devoted to these swatches. Yes, th these bags, little bags. I think there's 12 swatches in each one. Um, I'm teaching a variegated knitting, variegated yarn class this weekend. If you've been around for a while, you know I did a series on variegated yarn and it was a really popular series. There were tons of comments and feedback left, so I decided to turn it into a class. And I'm teaching that class this weekend at Vogue Knitting. Um, and I'll be teaching it again next year. Uh, details about that later on. Because it's a topic that seems to be something that knitters really want to discuss. So I spent a lot of time making a lot of swatches. Just with three different variegated yarns. So they're all in their own little separate baggies. I'm not going to pull them all out now. I just finished tagging a lot of them. Um, I didn't tag every single one. That would be a lot of tags. But like when I have, I had some where I would like to, one, I would, I had the one skein of yarn. So I would knit one row with one end of the yarn, knit the next row with the other end and repeat that. So I wanted to make sure I could tell the difference between that and the stockinette swatch. So I had to tag that one, but like mosaic and drop stitches and some movement stitches and lots of different ways to use variegated yarn. So I wanted to demonstrate those in three different yarn weights. So a lot of swatching, but I'm counting these as off my needles because they're all done now. I had, I did a lot of them, but they're all ready, ready to go. I'm ready for that class. I'm really looking forward to teaching it. Um, I'll, a, I'll try to remember to put a link to the playlist for that series down below because I mean it's not it's not exactly the same but a lot of the information you see in those videos of course is going to be in the class as well but then there's like a handout for the students and swatches like four swatches in the student handout so you can practice some of these stitch patterns and you can look at different variegated yarns and anyway so I'm really excited to be teaching that class but I'll put that playlist down below if in case you haven't watched it yet. Still on my needles is the Scout Shawl, and I did not meet my goal this month. I wanted to have these two charts finished. Oops, there goes my yarn. <laughs> yeah, lots of the ends, both edges have their own little ball of yarn because we're using Intarsia for those. So I'm working on these sections here, and they're long charts. There's two charts for each of them because she has every single stitch charted out. So you are like, it's all on there. I had been doing it on my phone, but the charts are enormous. <laughs> so I'm going to switch and put them on my iPad and I've got Knit Companion on there as well. And because the screen is much bigger, I'll be able to see more of the chart so I can work on this. But my plan had been to finish this, these two sections. And I think I still have about maybe 15, 20 rows or so of the charts before I'm done. So I didn't meet that goal for the month. Um, but I did, I did get some done, but this one, it's sort of falling in that sort of tedious position for me now. Well, because I think well, like the double knitting, when I do my stranded knitting on the wrong side rows, I'm really slow. Like it's, it's pick up one yarn and do my few stitches, drop it, pick up the other yarn and do a few stitches and repeat that. So it takes me a while to finish a row on the, the wrong side rows, but I do, I like the combination. I like the patchwork effect. It's just, and it's a nice pattern, easy to follow. No complaints there. It's just my own sort of slowness when it comes to doing stranded knitting, but, um, it's coming along. Hopefully I can get these charts finished and I'll get the my goal would be to have the next charts finished as well, but the patchworks, I mean, it's just really cute. And I wasn't sure about my color choices, but I, I think I like them. I, it just does look very patchworky. So you're combining two shades of one color, two shades of another, and then a neutral. So I've got um, my white is my neutral, and then two shades of purple, like this lavender back down here, and this darker purple, and then that darker green and that lighter green. So this uses Knit Picks palette, which is really good for stranded knitting because it sort of, it's a grabby yarn. Like all of the stitches really want to hold together well, which is what you want in stranded knitting. You want, you don't want to see like all the spaces between your stitches. You want them to sort of grab hold of each other. So the yarn is really good for that. So I'm behind on my Scout shawl, but I'm right on track with my Fading Point shawl. So 
I really, I really am happy with the colors. I wasn't sure. I'll show you a picture of like the colors all together. I dyed the yarn myself. Um, and at the time when I had all the balls of yarn out, I was looking at them and thinking, oh, these are really like, they're really slow, subtle color changes. So I wasn't sure they would show up, but now in the finished shawl, I think it looks really good. So I'm really pleased with that. So I'm gonna go to like the overhead and show you like what's happening with the construction here. I'm almost finished and I should be able to get this done this month, but let's go take a look at how this is actually constructed. So here's where I'm at with my fading point shawl right now. So I dyed the yarn myself. So I wanted like shades of coral and orange to blend together and I'm really pleased with how it came out. I wasn't so sure I thought it might be a little too subtle when I was when I had dyed the yarn and was looking at them all together, but I really think it came out really nice. Uh, but you start, you do this in two pieces. You start out over here on one edge with just a few stitches and you're increasing on the edges and in the center, kind of like a triangle shawl until it's as wide as you want it to be. And then at that point, you're still increasing in the center, but you're decreasing at the sides and that gives you like the rectangle shape. So you continue doing that fading between your different colors and you've got just garter stitch and some lace, pretty simple to do until you finish like this half, this piece here, and then you put everything on hold. So you can see some of the stitches are on hold here. The other half of the stitches are right here. And then you repeat that with the other side. You do the exact same process, casting on at the edge, working to this middle point, and then you join it together. So what happens then is you have this piece that is like an arrow head here. You've got like this sharp triangle right here, and you're taking half of that triangle on this side and this half over here and joining them together, which is what I've done here already on this side. So this piece was on the needle, so you just knit across, and this one had been on hold, so after you knit to this point here, you stop and you don't work on that piece. You come over and you join it to this piece instead. And then you are decreasing, sort of like working a triangle, this little triangle in reverse. You're decreasing at the sides and in the center. And that gets you down to your final few stitches to finish off right here. And of course, you're sort of fading your colors out in the other direction. So I have to repeat that for this side and finish off this little triangle. That's all that's left for this project. Should be able to get that done, but really happy with this. Really was a fun knit, very relaxing, not difficult to do. Got some increasing and decreasing garter stitch, a little bit of lace, and um, it's a big shawl because it's got a lot of different colors, but it's sort of like those are your marker points. Like you want to finish one color and move on to the next. So it just keeps you motivated to keep going. And this last little bit did not take me long. So I don't think this is going to take long to finish up. And I've already woven in all the ends I have so far. So I'll just have this little bit to do. But coming along, really great pattern. Really liked this shawl. So the yarn for this is Capretta Superwash from Knit Picks again. So it's a it was bare yarn, 80% superwash merino, 10% cashmere, 10% nylon. And I dyed the yarn myself using some jacquard acid dyes, three different colors, and I sort of created like five different yarn or dye baths to put the different skeins of yarn in. So that was lots of fun dyeing the yarn too. So I'm on track with my wrist warmers. I finished the first one. That's all done. Started the second, making good progress on that. I still have plenty of yarn left. I imagine I'm still going to have leftovers of this. So it's just some ribbing on both ends, stocking it tube. I alternated between five rows of one color, three rows of another, except for my purple right there, which was my three row color. I accidentally did four on that one. There are some points in um, one of the colors, wildflower, I think, where there is a bit of purple. So sometimes it was hard to tell which one was my purple stripe and which one was that other color because of the purple that's in there. But I mean, super simple. I just cast on the same number I use for my socks. For me, that's 72 stitches, and then I just knit a tube. So I would think like you could do the same. Like if you have a narrow foot, whatever you knit, knit for your socks, like, um, but put a sock on your wrist and see how it fits. And it's just very, I mean, pretty simple to make wrist warmers. If you want a pattern, um, uh, the Bakery Bear is Kay. She has one called Wrist Ticklers um, that, I mean, it's basically just a stock in it tube though. But if you want a pattern, then she has a free one. I'll link that down below if I think of it. So this uses Hypnotic Yarns Plush Sock. The colors are Wildflower and Amethyst Shadow. Really great sock yarn. Um, I can't remember. I think it's an 8515 base, like Superwash Merino and Nylon. I think it's 8515, but sock yarn basically. 
So I have the first panel for my Twitch sweater done. I know I originally thought I was gonna do all three panels over the past month, that did not happen. It was a scramble to get the one done. I had a goal, I was gonna get this one panel finished. Doesn't look like much right now because it's still all curling in on itself, but there is a bit like of armhole shaping where you increase sort of to drop the, the shoulder and the sleeve down a little further from the body. There's some back neck and some neckline shaping uh, and shoulder shaping on for, so this is the back right piece, I think. I can't remember now. So there are two more pieces to go for the back and then three pieces again for the front and then the two sleeves. The sleeves are gonna be super simple because it's so oversized, it's probably gonna reach like to my elbows by the time it's done and then you just have like elbow to wherever you want your sleeve to finish. But um, not much to say about it. The The yarn is a uh, Knit Picks Stroll. So just a uh, Knit Picks Fingering Weight Sock Yarn. Pretty soft. Um, in very bright colors. So each of the panels ha is made up of different width, uh, different stri stripes of different widths. Um, so this one was, I think it was 16 rows stripes. Um, I'm not sure what the next one is, but I think my plan is gonna be to like at least finish one more panel. I don't think I'll get to two because I have another sweater on my needles currently that's more like my work pro project, right? one of my work projects right now. And um, I mean, sweaters take a lot of time, so I can't really, devote a lot of time to this one as well, but we shall see. Maybe I'll, um, maybe I'll finish both back panels, we'll see. This one didn't take like a ton of time, it's just a big long section. There's some ribbing on the bottom, a lot of stripes, a little bit of shaping, but nothing particularly hard. And um, I'm, I'm just gonna, I wanna block this piece and then check my gauge, because I did my swatch, because um, it's sock yarn, and I can't remember now, like I know, what I, what I use, the US 1, 2.25 millimeter, when I knit socks with sock yarn, it's eight or nine stitches to the inch, and that was too many stitches. So I did US 2 for my swatch, and um, I think I had 28 stitches in my four inches for that. So neither one of those worked, so I figured I'm gonna have to split the difference and just go with a one and a half, and that's gonna have to be close enough. So I didn't re-swatch. So I think I needed 30 stitches in my four inches. And I knew I was not gonna get that with a US one, and it was not enough on a US two, so I had to split the difference, the US one and a half. So I'm gonna, um, I figured I would just knit a panel and then take my gauge measurements from that, like estimating what I thought. So I figured I'm just gonna knit the whole thing and then I can check my gauge from this and see if I wanna make any adjustments anywhere else, but I don't think I'll need to because it's gonna have to work because the one size up doesn't and the one size down doesn't, so it's gonna have to be this size needle. But I think I'll be okay, especially where it's a dropped shoulder, really oversized fit. So I know I'm at the ballpark for the stitch count anyway, um, because that was two stitches off with one needle size up, two stitches too few. So I should be pretty close to the ballpark there with this, but I still have to take my gauge measurements. I'm probably gonna do that this weekend before I work on the rest or start the next panel. But I love black paired with a bright color. I'm just like the pattern, I can't remember it called for like tubular cast on or something like that. And I'm like, no, that's not happening in black yarn. And nobody is going to see the cast on. You can barely tell there's any ribbing here. So it was just long tail cast on and do the ribbing and like try to count my rows, really bright light because it was really hard to see how many rows I'd done with the black. But um, I like the way the colors look together. They're just very bright. So that is coming along. Did not meet my goal for the month, but hopefully I'll have another panel done by the end of next month. Okay, so my yoke sweater <laughs> is not done. This was one that I was hoping, I had my swatching all done. I'm like, oh, I can cast this on, have it all done by the next episode. Nope, uh, because of the, the yarn, the variegated yarn class I was teaching, I had all that swatching to do. I had some other things I was working on design I was finishing up. So this one just sort of ended up on the back burner. Like, and it's the first time I've done, designed a yoke sweater. So I kept sort of putting it off. The grading took me a while to get the pattern graded. I wanted to make sure I could have that all done before I actually cast on. But then I finally was like, okay, it's done. You can't keep just grading the pattern. You actually have to cast it on. So I cast on this week finally. So this is just a couple days progress, but um, so it's gonna have, it's gonna be a beginner 
sweater pattern. It's going to have a full video tutorial. It's going to have two neckline options where I'm doing like the second option, which is to cast on with a provisional cast on and come back and finish the neckline after. I'm not sure if that's too much for a beginner pattern, but I, I like options and I prefer knitting a yoke sweater that way so I can adjust the, the size of the neckline. The other option, of course, is to cast on, do the neckline right away, how to work your back neck short rows, and then finish like the whole sweater. And then there'll be some options for different sleeve lengths, two body lengths, those are easy to adjust. And I might have, I was thinking about waist shaping because I like waist shaping in yoke sweaters, but then I feel like that's, Oh, that can be a little, that's heading into the too many things territory. So I think I might have that sort of like as a bonus when you buy the pattern, you get a separate, there'll be a separate like video tutorial and um, instructions on how to add waist shaping, not specific to this pattern, but how to add them to any pattern. Because I, I know you can, I mean, a lot of patterns have waist shaping. A lot of them don't because like the oversized drop shoulder thing is the thing right now, but I feel like where it's placed is very individual. A lot of people want it at their natural waist. I actually prefer mine a little bit higher because I have a long waist. And so I like, I prefer to put it at like the smallest point on my waist, which is actually not my natural waist. So, <laughs> so, uh, and you don't know which one the pattern designer has done. And I mean, if you're short-waisted, if you're long-waisted, if you have like an average waist, like all of that plays into where your waist shaping should happen. So I thought instead of just doing the average waist shaping in the pattern, having sort of like an extra bonus where you can decide, you know, because adding waist shaping is not a difficult thing to do. Um, and it's pretty, a pretty simple process. I think it's probably pretty simple for even, even like your first sweater to like add in a few like sections of decreasing and increasing just to add a little curve to the waist. So I think I'm gonna keep it as like a separate bonus addition, but not have it like in the exact pattern. That way you can add it if you want. And you also have that bonus that you can apply to any top-down sweater. It's not like specific to this garment itself. You can just use it with any pattern you want. You'll know how to do waist shaping and add it to all of your patterns. So I think that's what I'm gonna do just so the basic pattern isn't too much because it is supposed to be focused for like beginners who wanna knit a sweater. And then I wanted to make it enough, you know, like for those who want the basic sweater, but those who feeling a little more adventurous and wanna do like provisional cast on and, and all of that kind of stuff. And, Anyway, so the pattern, it's the pa the grading is done. I'm just like knitting from the grading right now. I haven't really, I haven't written the pattern. I'll do that with the next sample probably and knit sample number two, which will be for the mannequin size. Um, um, I'm not sure which yarn I'm gonna, I think that's Wool of the Andes Sport. I'm using all Knit Picks yarn. They um, gave me yarn support for this pattern. Three different yarns, but all the same they're all sport weight yarn. So I'm using Galileo for mine um, in this, what is this color called? It's a really lovely sort of icy blue. Stardust is the name of this one. So this is a blend of 50% merino and 50% viscose from bam bamboo. So it has like this really nice drapey feel to it, which I really like and a bit of a shine too from the bamboo. So the one for the mannequin will be Wool of the Andes Sport. And then I've got to do like, I'll do a, like a a little demo sweater as well and that one's going to be with Heatherly Sport that'll be for the video but there'll be like video bits from all of them because there's so many different um, like edgings I've got three different sort of like cuff and neckline edge treatments three different sleeve lengths two body lengths like a lot of things to sort of demonstrate and then like of course working your crew neck and the short row neck shaping and the yoke or come and then doing provisional cast on and coming back and finishing the neck if you want that option. So this is gonna work out to be one massive video, <laughs> but the plan is just to publish it here on YouTube with everything all in one video. So like with the pattern, you can just go and I'll have it all like sort of time stamps so you can go to whatever part you're working on if you wanna do this pattern. But the pattern, I mean, it's just gonna be plain stockinette and then like three choices for like the neckline cuffs and hem. And of course you can like use different treatments for every area, but the body of the sweater itself is gonna be plain stockinette. So we can focus on all of these other details instead of like trying to add a stitch pattern in there as well. 
but um, a, a cast on at least. <laughs> so hopefully, um, I'm hoping by the end of November, I'll have the body finished. I've got something else I need to get started because there's a due date for that one. And I mean, since this one is being self-published, I can push the date back and I did a little, I did push it back. It's gonna probably gonna come out around February is when that pattern and video tutorial will come out. Um, because I've got a knit my sample and then I've got like the mannequin sample and the videos to do and get the pattern sent off to a tech editor. Um, I do tech edit, like I've, I've got that certification through the Knitting Guild and I do tech edit my own simpler pattern, like sock patterns and stuff. I just, I, I um, download a PDF and I treat it just like I would for a client and I edit the pattern. But figure for something big, like a sweater with all these modifications, I want somebody else's eyes on it, on it, at, on that pattern as well to make sure everything is good. So I've got to make sure I've got time in my schedule to like give the tech editor time to edit as well. So probably February is when this one will come out, but no issues yet. I've done, I mean, a cast on, I've done my two increase rounds. I've got to do a little more knitting. And then my final increase round, um, this one has sort of a round neck. So there's three increase rounds. The crew neck will have four increase rounds. Um, but basically the trick with that is the round neck just basically you're casting on the first increase round of the crew neck so like for the crew neck you cast on do your crew neck shaping um knit some rows i can't remember how many and then do your first increase round and then th it would be the same as this for the round neck you're just going to cast on whatever that same stitch count is for the like the first increase round for the crew neck and then you'll just have the three increase rounds Does that makes sense uh, hopefully i'll be able to explain that in the pattern um so the neckline is a little bit further away than like a crew neck i don't really love crew necks so i like them to be a little away from my neck i don't like anything like up here i don't like turtlenecks really don't like those or anything like on my neck so i prefer with a yoke sweater to definitely to start further away and then come back later and decide where I wanted to end. But that's coming along. I am thinking about, my other thing is thinking about recording like a little behind the scenes of the whole process. So I don't know if that's a video that might happen where I just sort of show, you know, here's, I'm not gonna show you how I do every step, but you know, like sort of an overview of like, you got to swatch, you've got to do your math, you've got to do your pattern grading, you've got to knit a sample and then maybe show a little bit of all of that process. So I'm thinking about that. I've recorded a little bit of like the, the introductory part of it. So I'm not sure if it's actually going to become a video or not. Maybe we'll see, but it's actually on the needles now, which is a big step, but I definitely don't have it done. Like I had wanted to have it done at this point, but oh, well that happens. So the geode cowl, I have not done a thing with the yarn is still sitting in the bag. There's not even a needle in here yet. Like it did not even enter my realm of thought to sit down and figure this out. So nothing to say about it yet. It is still, I still want to do it. I just have been so busy with everything else, but um, it is in the plans to actually get this done, but there's really nothing to say about it right now. And I have one more upcoming project. Um, it's called the Adventure Cowl Hoodie. This is in collaboration with Brown Sheep Company using their Prairie Spun DK. This is a new color, uh, Wild Mallard. It's like this beautiful green, it's really nice. Um, so this, the plan for this is a hooded cowl. So it's going to have like a split hem, sort of I'm gonna start like knitting flat and do like a really deep mistake rib uh, hem on the cowl and then join in the round for the, like the cowl part. But then I'm gonna do some short row shaping in a couple places to sort of raise the back. Like you would raise the back neck on a sweater, but it's so, you can wear it as a hood. So it'll have extra fabric in the back and less in the front. So you can pull it up over your head if you wanted to. And then finish with a little more mistake rib and then like some kind of a drawstring opening. So you can like either close it around your neck or pull it up as a hood and then have the drawstring around your face. And I have it all thought out. I'm thinking it, it will work out just fine. I sort of, I mean, I've never done one before, but uh, that's what designers do, right? Like you'd wanna, you, you imagine something and then you wanna bring it to life. So I, I know how to do all the bits. I've never done like a drawstring thing in a pattern, but I don't think it's gonna be that hard. More like just a folded hem, maybe some buttonholes for your drawstring. 
So it's not with it's not like outside of my realm of skills. It's just I've never combined all of these pieces before, but I'm looking forward to it. So that my plan is to cast this on next week and I'm hoping it's a cowl. I mean, it's got a, it's a hood, so it's not like a tiny cowl. Um, but it shouldn't take a ton of a ton of time to do. So I've given myself a month to work on this and I think that will be plenty. And then I've got to do like write up the pattern and I'm doing the pictures, but it's going to be in collaboration with Brown Sheep. So it'll be available through them. Um, so it's coming out early next year anyway, but I'm really excited about this one because I've never done a hooded cowl before. So, and, but mistake rib is one of my favorite ribs. So that's why I'm using that for this. But so we have to keep an eye out for that. I'm, I'm really looking forward to this one and this yarn is just such a lovely color. And I've used a couple of their other brown sheep yarns and I've always really liked them. They're all just really good yarns, lots of great colors. Um, so that will be coming out with brown sheep and sometime early next year. Now I haven't bought anything in the past month, so I have nothing like that to show. I do have my Yarnable subscription here. That's the only thing I guess I've bought. And I did buy a new book. I was at the secondhand store with my daughter. She loves to shop secondhand. And I always go in and look at like the craft books and stuff. And I happened to run across this lovely book. And let me tell you, this is, I'm so glad I found this. This is a really good book. And I just flipped through it qu quickly at the secondhand store. And I'm like, yeah, I'm gonna buy this. Like it just looks really good. It's all about finishing. And I mean, I know how to do all that stuff, but this book, I just sat down yesterday and read through the whole thing and it's just such a good resource. Like Deborah Newton is, uh, she's one smart cookie. She's got such a, a wealth of knowledge. And in this book, she really shows you a lot of the behind the scenes of designing, which is really fabulous for me to see from somebody who's had, she's got so much skill and so much like background in design. So to see some of her thought process and how she puts pieces together and the finishing process is just amazing. So we're gonna to go to the overhead and take a look at this one. So here's a look at our book, Deborah Newton's Finishing School, A Masterclass for Knitters. And it's a lovely book. I even love the pictures in this. Some of the patterns have sort of a little dated look to them, but all of the information is absolutely fabulous. So let's take a quick look at the table of contents first. And as the name implies, this really is focused on finishing. Like Finishing 101 is the first chapter on um, schematics and even making your own which is really a great idea your tools that you should have and what you need to do to get ready for the finishing process chapter 2 is all about blocking talking about the tools and the methods and everything like that and then we have a great chapter on seaming and she calls it seaming seminar which is really fabulous because there's a, so much good information in here it really is like a full-on class chapter four is about edging so like things that you would add to the edges of your cardigans and things like that the types picking up stitches lots of other great things as well like mitered edges then chapter five, we have uh, buttons, zippers, pockets, and things like that, all of the other little bits that you're gonna add in the finishing process. And then chapter six has some fun extras like steaking or alterations. Uh, there's even felting and upcycling. So lots of great chapters. What's really cool, at least from like sort of a design perspective, is she has workshops within each one where she shows you like this lovely cardigan. I really love this cardigan, it's so pretty. Um, will be in one of these chapters as part of this workshop. She shows you like the swatching process or like the unfinished pieces and how she decided to finish them and do all of these beautiful details. And then along with that, at the end, all of the those patterns that she discusses, they are included in the back of the book as well and some other small resources. So from my perspective, I love, all of the information is really good and really solid, but I love the inclusion of what she calls these workshops where she walks you through how she did this with a specific design, like focusing on whatever that topic is for the chapter, like in the blocking chapter. The workshop is uh, two different scarves um, the same pattern, one's like a bulky scarf and one is a thinner yarn, but then how the blocking process works for both of those. So let's take a look. Well, let's take a look at that blocking chapter. So lots of lots of text, lots of pictures, lots of swatches in here. So here's the chapter on blocking. So lots to read about like the basics of blocking the tools, some swatches that she's done and some tips and advice like this one is about 
um, if you're adding beads to your to your knitting do that in the swatch and then check out how you want to block that swatch if you're planning to steam it like steam it to see how those beads are going to act and if like they're going to melt or something like that better to know that than you would accidentally do that to your finished garment and here we have that requisite picture of the before and after what blocking can achieve in a garment and here is that workshop so it walks through now the pattern for these scarves is at the end of the book as well but in this section she's walking us through the steps of blocking in particular with these two different yarns it's the same pattern but it's on two completely different yarn weights and the blocking process is probably slightly different for them because the yarn weight is so different so you can see there's tons of text here this now it's about like fibers and what you need to know about them for blocking so but me for me the fav my favorite part is the workshop and here is another workshop um, a tale of two tunics of two yarns and two tunics so you can see another lace design here both lace designs and then the workshop section on here is her swatch for that here's the unfinished pieces and then she walks you through some of the details about that which is just fabulous to hear from like a professional designer about her process for designing and then the the different finishing processes because you can see from her designs that she is really focused on fine finishing details like that that one cardigan is just to me it's just a stunning piece to show like some of the details you can add in the finishing process and yes this pattern is included as well so let's go take a look at that that one's right at the back because it is like a that's a like a master class piece right there it's beautiful so in this last section on like some of the extra details you can do one of the fun things you can do is add fabric to the edges or like she's added flowers to this cardigan and the fabric ruffle along the inside and along the the sleeve cuffs so she walks you through this process that she went through for it her swatching process how she decided how those flowers were going to be done her first idea was to embroider them on and then she decided later on that organza would work better and even here's the pieces before they were all finished and put together like I just love this part of this book like all how she shows you sort of the behind the scenes of the design process is really cool but all of the other information, of course, I shouldn't gloss over that. It's really good information on seaming and finishing and edge stitches. If that is something that you find difficult, then this is probably a great resource because she really goes into so much detail in that finishing process. Or if you are doing the master's program, this would be a good book as one of your references because, I mean, there's a lot of finishing steps, especially in level two. Um, that this would be really helpful for that program as well. So I don't know if you can still find this new anywhere. Maybe you can, maybe check Amazon, um, but it's probably available used. And if the finishing details are something that you like to focus on, this is definitely something to look at. And if you're a designer or you want to start designing, then I say it's a good book for that as well because you get such a good look at at her thought process and how she works through like the different steps of a design like I feel like that's just a class right in itself is to see to, to talk to somebody who has such a skill in that area and to see how she does things that's really worth it for that so let's talk yarnable I'm going to show my box and then we'll talk about the giveaway so the latest box of course is October so it's Halloween themed so everything comes in like a little zipper pouch I'm getting quite a collection of these I'm saving I'm using some and then I save some for when I do giveaways so I can have things you know to put things in um, so uh, and it always comes with a little card a little scratch off thing if you know you're gonna want to buy more yarn that's really nice and just lots of cute little information and details about what's in the package so what came in this one are these cute pens trick-or-treat pens with a little snowman looking <laughs> ghost and pumpkin which my daughter has already decided she wants so those are her she likes to steal half my stuff I think but um, she's I think she's just as happy to see this package come because she's always right there Ooh, what did you get this month and she doesn't knit and then an animated uh, detoxifying charcoal facial mask. So I don't know, I can feel it's very squishy in there. So I'm guessing it's like a bat shaped mask. If you look at the little picture on here, 
So yeah, my daughter's like, ooh, can I have that too? I'm like, I at least want to see it when it gets opened up. Um, yeah, an animated face mask. So yeah, she, <laughs> she wants this as well. So detoxifying charcoal. Uh, build up of dirt and oil for a complexion that's fresh and squeaky squeak eeky clean yeah okay the bat jokes very funny so very cute anyway just very cute and the last thing I am keeping for myself I already told her it's called cauldron crunch it's uh, a, a hand, homemade toffee or a homemade toffee from home h-o-l-m toffee so um, that one is for me. I want that. And it's been sitting on my desk for since the package came and um, I haven't touched it. I've been good. But now that I've recorded this, I can eat this. Well, it's early morning. I'll, I'll save this for this afternoon. And then the yarn every month also comes in a little drawstring bag, which is really nice. And I'm saving these too. So whenever I do a giveaway, I can put the yarn in a bag. So I just like those little touches. Oops, and it's shedding a bit, the little strings from the back. But this is the yarn for the month. This is called Witch Please. Give you an idea of the really fun variegated colors. That combination of purples and there's a bit of that witchy green down here. I don't know if it's reading green. It is like a limey green. Looks a bit yellow on my screen right there. But so this is the fingering weight subscription plush sock which is 8515 superwash merino uh it's 437 yards so plenty of yarn for like a one skein project and well goodness i've been using well hypnotic yarn it's the same yarn company for the muscleberg hat and now those wrist warmers and i still have yarn left so um Lots of yarn in these skeins, but I really like these colors. I have no idea what I'm going to use this for yet. It's going to get added to my little shelf right there. I'm starting to get a little supply of yarn there. Um, so I have to start finding some projects for these. And this is also our giveaway for the month, not for this specific box. You're going to be getting the November Deluxe box, which um, I can't remember the Deluxe package, how many skeins of yarn. It's multiple skeins. I just get the single skein of yarn. But you get the deluxe box you can choose whether you want dk or sock so to enter the giveaway that's going to be what you can answer down in the comments below if you won the giveaway would you want the dk weight or the sock weight yarn just tell me which of those and i'll know you want to want to enter the giveaway so the giveaway is for a yarnable box not the, the like the one i just showed you but not this one it'll be for the next the upcoming november box which is going to be shipping out very soon so leave a comment telling me whether you would choose the DK weight or the sock weight. And next Tuesday, November or October 29th, I will choose a winner. I'll leave a comment under your comment telling you to send me an email with your mailing information. And I can send that on to Cheryl over at Yarnable. Um, if I don't hear back from you within 48 hours, I'm going to delete my comment and choose a new winner until somebody responds. I've had to do this sometimes where I've had to do it three times before I got somebody to respond to me. So please have your notifications turned on. I can't tell you how to do that. Every device is different. You'll have to go look at your settings just so you know when somebody replies to your comment so you know that you won the giveaway. So leave your comment down below. The giveaway is open worldwide because Yarnable ships all over the world. So anybody can enter this one. All of the fine print and details for the giveaway are down below in the video description box. Uh, YouTube is not sponsoring this giveaway in any format. I'm hosting it. Yarnable is providing the subscription and sponsoring the giveaway. And last of all, depending on your location, if you are outside of the US, you may have some kind of customs or duties or taxes to pay on your package that is not mine or Yarnable's responsibility. So you're entering this giveaway knowing that you may have to pay customs or duties depending on how that works in your location. But if you're fine with that, then be sure to leave your comment telling me if you won, whether you'd want a DK or sock weight package. And that is it for this episode. So thank you so much for hanging out with me today. If you're new to Nerdy Knitting, then I will put the playlist here for this season of the podcast so you can see what I've done in the past few months for my knitting projects. And if you've been around for a while, I'll let YouTube vi recommend a video for you and I'll see you in the next video.